bedroom? I might ask you the same question. Dad? What are you doing wandering around the halls of this hospital, Dixie? What's the matter with him? He's asleep. You have just had a baby. Well, then why doesn't he wake up? Because he is sedated. Why, do you, why, do you think I put a pillow over his head and suffocated him? Don't you have any compassion? No, I don't have any compassion for Tad Martin. And if he doesn't stop interfering in our lives, I'm... What? What would you do, Adam? What exactly would you do? Oh, Daisy, come on. What do you, what do you think? I'm the kind of a man who would sneak into a, ho um, uh, a hospital room and hurt somebody who couldn't defend himself? I don't know, Adam. I really don't know. You happened to punch him in the ribs when they were already broken. He provoked me. He, he snuck into my wife's bedroom and tried to get her to run away with him. That had nothing to do with me. I have never done one single thing to make you jealous, Adam. I love you. You are the man that I want. You are the man that I care about. I want more than anything in this world to believe you and to trust you. But you make it very difficult because you're always acting so funny. And people say things. Say what things? I want you to do something for me. And it's very important. I want you to put your hand over your heart and swear to God that you had nothing to do with getting Tad hurt. <laughs> You're not serious. I am very serious. Do it, Adam. I swear to God I had nothing to do with Tad's present misfortune. Okay, now, will you listen to me? I came in here to tell him once and for all to stay out of our lives. Dixie, his obsession with, with interfering in our marriage borders on a psychotic. I, I, I'm concerned about your safety and my babies. Well, there's no need to be worried about any threat to your family from my son, Adam. Apart from the fact that he wouldn't touch a, a hair or harm a hair on her head, or the babies for that matter. He's been sedated. In fact, he's due to have another injection momentarily. I'm delighted to hear it. Oh, I'm sure you are. Dixie, listen, I'm sorry, honey, but you've really got to get more rest. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm Please. Sorry. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. It's okay, go, let's go back, okay? Thaddeus. Keep him away from me, Cecily. Dad, Pico's not going to hurt you. He's empty-handed. Go ahead, honey. Show him your hand. See? Peace. Peace. Yeah, I'll give you peace, you Benedict Arnold. Visiting hours are over. Well, what kind of greeting is that? Look. Look at this. We brought you balloons. Isn't that beautiful? Dad! Yeah, that's great. He's up to something. No kidding. But he's not going to get away with it because Dixie and I did not save your life so you can go stumbling all over this hospital asking for a relapse. Would you, would you let him talk? What, what is your plan? What? I'm not opening my mouth. You can trust us. Please don't encourage him. Is it legal? Is it dangerous to your health? Would you tell us, huh? We're, we're on your side. You promise you won't rat to the Gestapo? You mean the chief of staff of this hospital or the director of nursing? No, silly. He means his mom and dad. My lips are zipped. Cecily? What? Uh, now, what are we against here? Dr. and Mrs. Martin, Adam Chandler? Could you please tell me what's going on? You don't have to understand it. Just give me your word. All right, I swear I won't rat. All right, Nico? Scout's on it. Now we're talking.
Ross. So, this is your boy. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, looks like a peanut, but he's a fine, strong boy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, Adam, don't thank me for coming. I only came here because I heard he was in trouble, and I just wanted to make sure he was past the crisis. How's Dixie? She's fine. She's recovering nicely. In other words, she's not taking your bull anymore. You can drop the chip off your shoulder, Ross. You don't need it. Look at my son. He's a symbol of hope and family. So why don't we just uh, mend the bridges and try to go on from here? Beginning with his christening. I'd like you to be his godfather. You're kidding. You have more in common with that boy than anybody else on this earth. You pointed that out to me once. You're half Chandler and half Cooney. And so is he. He's your double cousin. And he needs you in his life just as much as I do. What are you trying to do to me? If you're using that son of yours for family values, I really feel sorry for him because the only time we had values was when Brooke was in the family. Okay? She almost made you seem human, Adam. She gave you every chance, but you blew it. I can't get past that. And I sure as hell am not going to get past what you're going to do to Dixie. What I'm going to do to Dixie is make our marriage a success. What marriage are you talking about, Adam? We both know the only reason you married her is so you could legitimize the son. What marriage? We know you don't have a marriage. Sweetheart, look who came to see the baby. Congratulations, Sixie. Thank you. How are you feeling? I heard you had a rough time, but you look great. She's fine. You won't stay off her feet enough, but uh, she's a new mother. Naturally, she's a little excited. I get enough rest. Is there a boy? He's little, but he's awfully cute, isn't he? The most precious gift in the universe, thanks to you. He's a fighter. And he's waiting for me, so I'm going to go on in. Always good to see you, Ross. Tell him his cousin says hello. Ross, wait, wait. Will you at least consider what I ask? Consider what, Adam? You want me to be his godfather? You want me to stand up and swear before God and a lot of people that I'll be responsible for him in case anything happens to yes. you? Yes. I can't think of a more eloquent way to tell you that I love you and I trust you. Don't, don't. Don't do this to me. Ross, I want you in this family. No, you don't want me in any family. You just want to control me. It doesn't work that way anymore. You don't pull the strings and I jump. Haven't we hurt each other enough yet? Yeah, we have, Adam. And come on, take a look at her. Dixie. Poor Dixie. The way you've hurt her. You're still planning to hurt her. And I find what you've done to her disgusting. I think everything from the beginning has been disgusting. I'm asking for the boy's sake, will you just think it over? Get out of here. To give this to Dixie immediately. Without Adam catching it. Adam can't see it. If it falls into his hands. Dad, I will guard this with my life. I promise. What does it say? It says loose lips sink sheep. And go on. Now, I don't understand why we're sneaking around like this. Why can't we just give this to the nurse? She'll hand it to Dixie. No and... more questions, please, Cecily. I'm too tired. You heard the patient. Come, Come on, let's go. Well, it's okay anyway, because Nico will tell me everything later. We don't have secrets from each other, right, honey bun? All right, Cupcake. Anyway, so there. Did you reach Aikens? He's got his ear to the ground trying to figure out who did this to you, but so far, nothing. Doesn't matter. If she answers the letter, it won't matter anyway. You're going to tell me that you don't need proof that Adam Chandler did this to you? talking about the power of the written word. The, the power of what? If she believes the letter, 
she'll believe the whole story. Oh, please. You know, this, this medication they're giving you is making you a little crazy. How many more broken bones do you want? Nico, I'm making progress. They were in here a while ago talking. I pretended to be asleep. I actually, I, I drifted in and out, but I heard enough to know that you're starting to doubt him. You're gonna get burned. No. Yeah. I love her, Nico. I gotta save her for what I know he's got in store for her. What about what he has in store for you, Ted? I'll handle it. You can barely walk. How do you think you can get to Dixie's room, huh? Won't have to. She'll come to me. ICU nursery. Are you a parent? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sorry. You can look through the glass. Oh, well, well, could you do me a big favor? Um, Dixie Chandler's in there with her baby, and I have to give this note to her. Could you please make sure that she gets it right away? Sure. Thank you very You're much. Stronger every hour. He must be lonely. What, with his mother and father right here? Nah, nonsense. He looks peaceful. Nurse said I could feed him soon. You hear his mother. I'm content just to look at him. Alan. Hmm, what? Forget it, nothing. What's wrong? Nothing, I'm just tired. <laughs> well, it's been a long day. Yes, it has, and you must be exhausted. Now it revives me just to look at my son. Why do you keep saying that? What? My son. He is my son. He's our son. But he's... he's gonna get my name. He's the next generation. He's the hope of the future. Every one of my dreams come true. Well, that's... that's dear, Adam, but... he's my son, too. I mean, you keep saying he's my son like he's not my son, and... and, and, and he's our son. Well, Dixie, I'm sorry. I, I, I'll, I'll say our son from now on. I'm, I promise, all right? Is this postpartum depression? No. I'm simply trying to be honest with you, Adam. Huh. You look terrible. You, got, you haven't gotten much sleep lately, have you? No, not a whole lot. I, I, don't, I don't remember when the last time was I slept. Well, you, you just look awful. I mean, you've got bags under your eyes and everything. I don't want to leave him. I mean, or you, of course. Well, we know, we understand. I really think you ought to get some sleep, though, because I think it's very important. You know, she's right. You've kept us up long enough, sport. Now you hang in there. You keep up the good work, just sleeping peacefully. That's the idea. Goodbye, son. I love you. Good night, Dixie. That's all done. I'm out of here. And all of a sudden, whap, right smack into Adam. I, I'm tired. My heart stopped. It was Stephanie, in my throat. what the hell happened? Well, I tried to stall him. But, you know, the man just brushed me off like, like, like it was fly or something. And, and he saw Dixie reading the note. Oh, 
But anyway, she must have lied. She said something because she put it in her pocket and he forgot all about it. She did that? She read the note that she hid it from him? She gave me the signal that everything was okay. I knew it. I told you, Nico, I knew it. You knew what? Nothing. Cecily, thank you very much. You're welcome. What did the note say? Dad, how come he can know and I can't, huh? Do you know what's going on? Walls have ears. Well, what do you think I am? Radio Free Pine Valley or something? You can trust me. Aren't visiting hours over? I don't understand them. You tell him everything, and I don't know what's going... Uh, uh, I think he wants us to leave. Uh, thanks for the candy and the balloons. Yeah, well, the candy is for Dixie. We'll share. Besides, don't you two have a club to run? Well, this is the thanks we get. Fine. We can take a hint. Thanks a lot. You're a pal. Yeah, yeah be you're careful. Welcome. Be careful with what? Why be careful? Why? Oh. Cecily, thank you very much. Bye. I still think you're crazy, but good luck. Good night, Nico. Will you please, please fill me in? He's nuts. Well, I know that, but well, what's this thing with Dixie? I mean, I thought they were friends. Is he in love with her or something? Why does everything have to revolve around love? Because it does. Oh. But she's married. We're married, huh? It's no big sacred deal. Well, not to us, but Dixie does love Adam. What's love, Cecily, huh? A big red valentine full of pain? Maybe she's had it with him. Give me a relationship based on, on solid partnership any day. Tad wants love, let him have love. Well, you know, someday... Someday, someday what? All I care about is today. I had doubts about our marriage. But you hit the nail right on the head. Everything's going great. Club's getting off the ground. Everything's staying uncomplicated, just like you said it would, right? You promised that, didn't you? Yes, yeah, yes, right, uncomplicated. Right. And after what I went through with Julie and what you went through with, with Sean, I'm relieved that we're not falling in love. I'll say, I mean, falling in love can be a lot of trouble. Amen. Happy second anniversary. You've never been so happy. You've never been so beautiful. Where's my little pup? Uh, he's with Lainey. Because I have a little present for you. Something that I hope you will be as happy about as I am. Well, what's that? Dixie, you're not... Dr. Clater told me today. I don't believe it. I'll In eight months. months. We're going to have, have a, a baby. Have a baby. <laughs> Great. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, I knew you looked extra beautiful. Mm. Oh, Junior won't be too jealous. Are you kidding? Oh, no, no, no. There's no way I could love that kid any less. Believe me, he's, he's taught me what my mom's known all along, that you can love an adopted child just as much as you love your own. I'm so glad you rescued us from Adam. I don't know what Junior and I would ever do without you, Ted. You won't have to find out. There were a lot of people who said I didn't love me, but he divorced me right after the baby. You and Adam deserve each other. I want you, Dixie. I need you. 
You care for me, too. Why else would you sit up with me all night at the hospital? It's the truth. You can't deny it. I love you, Dixie. I love you. I love you, Dixie. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.